traveling through Vietnam by motorcycle, about to enter Nha Trang, a sophisticated tourist city by the beach. Nha Trang Bay is deep, quiet, and warm year-round, and it's been recognized as one of the 29 most beautiful bays in the world. A new cable car crosses the bay to Vin Pearl Resort. It's the longest sea-crossing cable car in the world and sees daily traffic of more than 3,000 people. When you go to Nha Trang, you have uh, many different things. You can visit uh, towers, you can visit islands with uh, uh, some water sport activities, you can relax. But Nha Trang is the place for, for international and local people. To, they, they, they want to go there to relax. My wife would, she would absolutely love to come to Vietnam, but um, we'd probably have to have shorter days on the bike. I, I could sit on my motorbike and ride all day long. Uh, Mary would like to come into some of these resorts and probably spend two or three days, you know, not just come in, sleep, and then hit the road the next day. And she would love that. I just, I was really amazed at the, the level of uh, service that is available. As an international destination, uh, Vietnam has a lot of things to offer. We have a uh, different culture, beautiful landscape, history, very charming, very nice pictures. Uh, we have very hospitable people. We have a lot of things to offer. In the morning, we bid farewell to coastal Vietnam and head inland towards the central highlands. We're excited to leave the crowds behind and experience the freedom of the open road. But the roads here are full of trucks and traffic. So we pass on the right as we're instructed. Our handlers continue to follow us and keep an eye out for any trouble we might encounter. As we gain elevation, the traffic thins out and a landscape of forested mountains appears. This is the country we came to see, and these are the roads that will take us there. The Central Highlands are populated by many different ethnic minorities. Their customs sometimes conflict with the official Vietnamese government. As such, it's considered a sensitive area, and we're not encouraged to stop or interact with the local population. Now we don't have uh, a lot of tourists visiting the area because, some, because of sensitive matters. Despite the worries of our host, we continue to explore the countryside peering into the lives of ordinary farmers who go about their business with little interest in our passing. As observers, it's difficult for us to understand how communism affects the lives of ordinary citizens in Vietnam, but it's an important part of the fabric of their society. In Vietnam, before you, 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 you came, because of the propaganda, the worry from, from Vietnamese officers. Their worry also make me worry. I don't know when you come, you may make something wrong and I have problem. If you make something wrong, I have problem. We seem to have gotten separated from uh, Mr. Tan and Helge somewhere along the road with the van. Uh, we slowed down and we're photographing, a, filming a, uh, a pig on the back of a little Honda motorbike and they went up ahead. So they must have stopped somewhere and we went by them. They're either ahead of us or behind us, but we'll, we'll find them. You want to, to make film. You want to, to have more and more good pictures. So 
the main purpose of yours is very good for travel business, for a country. So now I don't feel worried any, anymore. <laughs> Communist or capitalist, we, we don't care. We just care happiness. We just care how easy we can make business. Our host embodies the new spirit of capitalism that exists in modern Vietnam, but it's a delicate job for him. Uh, this is the biggest jungle area in the country, a lot of forest. When you arrive in Vietnam, you would see that uh, scenery is changing. Countryside, forest, buses, and along the way, a lot of uh, rubber trees on the way. This is also the home of coffee, very famous coffee. The land here, very good, very suitable for coffee. Uh, sometimes we are the first, sometimes we are the second, uh, just after Brazil. Yes, uh, but I think if we, uh, we are a little bit behind the world about, uh, I mean about technology, about the way to do business. But if we have a better way of doing business, we have better uh, way of promotion, I think Vietnam could be the first. So uh, this area, I think, uh, one of the rich area for the e economy. With all of this talk about Vietnamese coffee, we decided it was time to stop and try some at a local restaurant. Coffee was introduced by French colonialists in the late 19th century. Most of the people in Vietnam drink Vietnamese coffee from the Central Highlands. The coffee grown here is of the Robusta variety, which is known for having a higher caffeine content than the Arabica variety. Preparation is done with a small single cup filter which produces a rich, dark cup. It's a slow process, but well worth the wait. You can't rush a good cup of coffee. Oh yeah. So good. Starbucks has a lot to learn. By size, Vietnam is the 66th largest country in the world. Not exactly huge by anybody's standards. By population, it ranks number 13. There are more than 85 million people that live in Vietnam, and today, it seems like they are all driving on the road at the same time. Part of the excitement of traveling by motorcycle in Vietnam comes from sharing the road with so many other people and observing the continuous flow of possessions being moved back and forth. You just never know what to expect next. But today I think it was one of the better days. It was all these rice fields, there were coffee, there were chicken, there were pigs. I mean, what do you expect? Oh, we came from zero to, I think we're around 2,000 feet now. Yeah. So, and it's cooled off a little bit. We missed most of the rain today, so that was good. And uh, this looks like a pretty nice little town. And it's not quite dark yet. We made it in before dark. You've been, you, I saw you were racing in, <laughs> dodging uh, women and oh, small gosh, children. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to do a little dance, I think, on one of these roundabouts. But you know, it's just like, who's got the right of way? And it's just, I don't know, it's a game of wills. When we ride on the Central Highland Road, we feel very excited because it's very nice landscape uh, and I hope that in the future the region may attract more and more visitors. 
In the morning, we're encouraged to visit a national park in the area. It's a chance to get off the bikes for a while and stretch our legs, surrounded by the beauty of nature. Today we are going to dress up waterfall. This is one of the most imposing waterfall in Vietnam. Uh, a lot of water uh, almost around the year. It's really gorgeous. I think actually I'm going to stop to take a little picture. We are going to go up a little closer. But they say that this is the largest waterfall in Vietnam. So we are going to walk up now a little closer after taking a couple of pictures and see how close we can get to this waterfall. <laughs> it's a totally not maintained track that we are following here with bamboo and, well, yoga classes pay off that finally. And we go through a cornfield, farmer's cornfield in the park. Well, I grew up on a farm in Iowa, so this is kind of funny to come into a national park here in, uh, in Vietnam and then along the trail to the beautiful waterfalls, they've got a cornfield. Uh, it's just not what I expected. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And I see to take a picture here is going to be more or less impossible because it's like a rainstorm in front of me. The water is just piling off that cliff and it's wet. We're not the only tourists who come here. As the country has opened its doors to tourism in the last decade, many visitors from around the world are discovering the hidden charms of Vietnam. Back on the road, we're always looking for opportunities to interact with local people. When we spotted a woman working in a rubber tree plantation, we pulled over to investigate. Well, we've been seeing a lot of rubber trees along the road, and uh, Chris and me were wondering if we should go in and explore a little. And the excuse, we were got to do some off-road riding, and there were some guys with some cattle and stuff, and we just had much fun with them because they were riding on their cows, we were riding on our cows. up to a tree and here comes this young lady. She is out uh, collecting all of the rubber. So uh, Tan, can you tell me a little about uh, what is she doing? What is her work? Who does she work for? Is this private enterprise? Or? Uh, she works for a government company. Mm. Uh, this is rubber government company. This is from yesterday. The rubber tree gives meal to the, uh, to, to the bow. Then she takes the, the, the rubber and she bring own bed to uh, her company. Yeah. But one day she could uh, uh, do about 600 trees, double trees, long. yes, oh. yes. How is she paid? Is she paid by the day or how many trees she make? She uh, get uh, uh, 200, uh, 2 million 500 thousand dong, equivalent to uh, 150 dollars a month, but uh, uh, a lot of labor, a lot of working, very hard working. And uh, she also said that um, uh, this is poisonous, poisonous job, poisonous job. In the afternoon, it starts raining, and we've still got a full day's worth of riding ahead of us. Our guides continue to follow us on their own motorcycles. Mr. Tan is on the back of his assistance bike, and the man we now call Agent Orange is trying to stay dry. They're prepared for the rainy season, and so are we. Riding in the rain isn't particularly fun, and we're taking our time mindful of the additional dangers that come from riding in this kind of weather. When the rain finally stops, we find ourselves with a new challenge, riding in the dark. Uh, it is, I don't know. It's dark. We have, it's quarter past seven. Uh, we probably have uh, 45 minutes left. So eight o'clock is my bet. 8.09, we will be at the hotel. 
<laughs> Rain appears for the second time today. Just after filming this footage of Chris and Helge from the comfort of the van, I see Chris suddenly fall down on the pavement. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know what it was, you know, riding at night, dark, rain, slippery roads, kid and sea, but yeah, I know I just fell down and uh, didn't seem to hurt anything. The bike's okay. I'm okay. Uh, got a little scratch on my engine guard, uh, but popped my helmet, the uh, visor off my helmet, so I don't know. But you know, it's really weird because I didn't have any alarms going off that anything was going to happen. But yeah, I mean, if you ask me what happened, I couldn't tell you. Well, riding at night, it's no fun. And I think we, we all agree that we got a little late start today. So tomorrow we're going to do the opposite. So we'll be up at seven o'clock and going at eight. There's going to be a new day and I bet you there are going to be some new adventures. We are ready for another day with the Global Indochina expedition. We are heading down to the coast again, even though it really feels nice up here in the mountain. We did some leatherman work, set up uh, Chris Jacobs over this morning, so he got it a little better dialed in for another day. We have no clue what's ahead, as normal, and actually our guide too have no clue, because this is supposed to be a brand new road, and uh, we are going to go around 300 uh, kilometers. So. Let's get on the road and see what happens today. It's my job to film this trip, which I do from the back of Chris's bike. I like filming people this way and seeing the world rush by from the back of a flying motorcycle. Helge takes pictures too, while he's riding. At the end of the day we compare our shots. Two different perspectives on the same experience. So we were riding along the road and then we saw this building. So I was wondering, uh, Tan, what can you say about this? I, hear, I understand it's kind of a traditional building. Yes, this is uh, the name of this uh, house. It's a communal house. This is the place for, for people, for local people. This uh, here, huge tribe people. They, uh, they, they come here, they enjoy something, they do some festival here. They uh, uh, enjoy their national holiday here, and uh, uh, in general, this is the place for their meeting. Yes, and now we are going to uh, the highway number one. So we are basically heading for the coast now, and I don't want to go to the coast. I want to stay up here. This is perfect for motorcycling. It's not the fastest road in the world, but take your time, you know, look around and just enjoy and get rid of those big ugly buses with diesel puking out the back. It's, we just slacked off from one and it's a gorgeous day. It's not so humid as it was the other day and uh, I'm looking forward to continue. intersection trying to decide which road to take but we've had a great ride we've been up in the mountains it's beautiful jungle and just curvy road beautiful road nice sealed road so now I think we're gonna go and uh, just head on on to uh, Hoi An 
about, uh, I think, probably another three hours or so. Okay. It's so different from the rest of the country. We've been through everything, but everywhere it's been people. And this is the first time I feel I can, like, ah, breathe out and just take in the nature and the road without being concerned about buses, a million small scooters. Just beautiful nature, like you see behind me here. This little uh, stream or river, waterfall, come cascading down the mountains. And I look on my GPS and it's a 4.2 kilometer to the border of Laos. I think that's the closest we are going to be to the border before we uh, come up in the north and we actually cross the border into uh, Laos. We were very close. I'd say we were probably within five kilometers of the Laos border. And uh, just up in the mountains, so you could look out over the, over the hills and, and into Laos. And uh, uh, I think it was uh, Dak Toy. Um, there's a, it's a very, very famous battle was fought back there on uh, Charlie Hill. And it ended up being a battle to the death. And the Viet Cong uh, ended up taking the hill. But it was very, very bloody and a very big battle. And it was probably one of the biggest and last battles of the war, I think. It's kind of the turning point. We're going to continue now on this great road. It's just winding through beautiful green country. And then we're going to go down to the coast. And I bet you it's going to be much hotter. This is 3,000 feet up here. Cool, nice, really like it. The freedom that comes from riding a motorcycle is direct and immediate, but it's only half the story. The other half is the fullness that comes from slowing down and absorbing the world around us. As we travel toward the coast in the late afternoon sun, we come across an opportunity to witness a time-honored tradition in Vietnam, drying the rice harvest on the side of the road. They get rice from the fields to here and they put on the street to dry it up, to dry the rice up. Uh, she, she just want to, uh, to make cleaner, to make the rice cleaner. So she used the wind? Yes, so the, the wind. wind take away yes, the, the natural wind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you said we need to hurry up, why is that? Because, because it's nearly the time they, they finish the job during the day. Ah, so they know we'll yes. take it in and go yes. in for the night. Yes. So every day they take it out like this? Just today. after the harvest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the harvest. As we leave the central highlands of Vietnam, we feel as if we've made friends with a new part of the world and look forward to the time when we may travel these roads once again. You look like a nice guy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay, that was one more hectic day and we are now at the coast. We haven't seen the ocean yet, but I think we are going to go in and uh, get off our stinky clothes here. We're going to have a good rest now and we are ready for another day tomorrow. The north coast of Vietnam, a spectacular landscape of lush mountains falling into the Pacific Ocean. We're riding north on Highway 1 to Hanoi and Halong Bay. Right now, we're just about to enter the ancient city of Hoi An. 
Hoyan is a little ancient town. And now uh, tourists go there, they could see that Hoi An is a peaceful place with uh, own architecture of Vietnamese, Chinese, uh, Japanese, and even European. You know, Hoi An, the population only 80,000 people, but one year they receive almost 800,000 tourists. As a tour operator, um, I have many favorite places in Vietnam. But if, if only one, if I have to say only one, it's not easy. But I think I would love Hoi An. Because Hoi An, the atmosphere, peaceful, easier, and not too much pressure over there. So I, I could live in Hoi An. I think we're going to take a little walking tour of the old town this morning, but I think the big thing is we're going to stop by a tailor shop. I have a many kind of seal, uh, Vietnamese seal, Japanese seal, and um, Chinese seal. I never owned a suit in my life, never ever. I surprised my wife one time, I borrowed a suit from a friend, and she asked, who is this wonderful man? And I said, it's not me, <laughs> so I want a suit. The price very reasonable, if not very cheap. And the people they, they do in business, they are more genuine, more sincere. And especially they, they can make your clothes very quick, even in a few hours. That is what international clients, they, 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 they like that very much. So on your coats, do, are they lined? Do they have yes, a the lining? With the lining? And are they double stitched or single? Yes. Double stitch. Double stitch. Oh, perfect. Uh, I think I take without all of no, that because bad. I'm going to get all the, everybody's going to all, all the time going to ask me what it is and I forget <laughs> it. <laughs> so, Helge, do you even know how to tie a tie? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Made in Norway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Do I look good? I need a haircut too. Do you do that? Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, but <the> over this. <laughs> Education has always been considered important to the Vietnamese, and we had an opportunity to visit a local high school in Hoi An. In Vietnam, uh, now the government you know, have regulations, uh, something like law, uh, the 12th grade, 12th grade, yes, before 9th grade, so compulsory uh, education. Elementary school, uh, only half a day, but from uh, secondary school, or especially uh, high school, so sometimes they study both, uh, nearly eight hours, nearly eight hours. Uh, traditional and also the school regulations in Vietnam. Uh, high school uh, girls, they wear long dress in white. We, we say outside, outside. Uh, and the uh, school boys, they wear, you know, also in uniform, but uh, the trouser, the trouser in, in, in black or in, 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 in blue, and uh, the shirt in white. So beautiful. Yes, they uh, go back home uh, for lunch and maybe they come back in the afternoon. And for high school boy, high school, school girl, they go here to uh, buy bicycle.
We're up here in the uh, mountains just outside of uh, Da Nang in central Vietnam, and we've been just having a, uh, a great ride. And I'm ready to head on on more twisties. This road just up going up here you know, this morning, it's been fantastic. I can't wait because that's what I've seen in Vietnam. Every corner you come around is a new surprise, and there are going to be many more ahead. Well, we started out from Hoi An in beautiful sunshine and really warm. And so what happened, Chris? Well, I don't know. We like pulled up here to the hotel and uh, we were all nice and dry in our rain gear. So we took that off and then it um, started raining. Actually, before that, we come into some, we saw some black, black clothes up ahead. And we were smart that time. We turned in to uh, get on the rain gear and we stayed like we said, dry all till we come here to the hotel. And here, our videographer Sterling is forcing us to stay out and enjoying oh, yeah. the splashing water. I'm gonna go ahead and have a nice clean shower. What about you? I think I need a shower now. Well, right now we're in the uh, central Vietnam coast and it's beautiful here. We're right on the Perfume River and uh, we're in front of the citadel. It's an old uh, walled fortress where the, uh, the kings or emperors used to live. Uh, there's a whole city inside there. It's huge. It's like 10 square kilometers. I have my camera ready and you know, it's a pretty darn good day. We have had a little rain and stuff and today it's, it feels good. It's going to be a great day. So we will see you down the road. Uh, from here to Hanoi, uh, the uh, traffic not not very bad like in uh, Saigon and Hanoi, but also busy street. But now we are on the highway number one. As you know, that uh, the highway number number one from the, the up north to the the end south of Vietnam. So this is the main street, the main road for transportation between the north and the south. It's a lot of work. It's in and out of traffic. It's kind of playing chicken with these guys. You know, they have their own rules. You have to respect that, but there are a lot of no rules. It's kind of the bigger you are, the easier you can go through. Like the buses, they are just crazy. They just weave in and out. So I think it's the survivors. survival of the fittest. That's for sure. So we just crossed the DMC on the new bridge. This was an area where they, basically it was a border between two divi a divided country and some firing were going on, some protection going on. It's a monument of a tragic event in the history of uh, Vietnam. And today it's a new bridge and that's still Highway 1 that we were riding over here. But I think it's good to have memorials like this because it reminds of of a mistake done in the past and hopefully we don't do that in the future. Yes, uh, this is the place uh, where divided in uh, Vietnam in two, two countries during the war more than 30 years ago. That was a very sad story. But uh, anyway, now we are happy we are in the Union. This area here is very flat on my GPS. It's minus 3.2 meter, <laughs> I'd say. We were just on the road here, and uh, we stopped by the road and met some people working out in the fields, uh, harvesting uh, the rice. And they had some buffalo there that didn't like big men in blue riding suits, that for sure. <laughs> uh, but we stopped and talked to this guy. He took his buffalo up and uh, showed us. So. I'm so surprised about this country that how much it's been going through and how friendly people are. We still have 70% of population doing on the farms. So we, we need a lot of water. 
language. So uh, that's why we uh, have an uh, irrigation system. You know, many rivers in Vietnam. So we take the, 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 the water from rivers, we make many canals. Yes, and we bring water from the uh, rivers to um, fields through the canal system. Yes, the land belongs to the government, so the local people here, they rent the land for long term, for example, 30 years, 50 years. They uh, stay there, maybe they, they live there. Yes. They, they take care of their fish farm because, you know, that is the big ponds where they uh, raise, shrimp or squeeze or fish over there and they need to stay there to take care of them. It's interesting to know what you are passing as we go by here. So let's see if we find something else interesting down the road. It's just another day on the road in Vietnam and now we are heading in to see how it is to enter Hanoi. That's going to be another spectacular ride, I think. So what do you think about this intersection? Boy, the traffic's really picked up the closer we get to Hanoi. It's a lot more aggressive. People are really, seem like they're more of in a hurry than, than before. Oh, I, I closed my eyes right now. I feel like I just have to close my eyes and get to it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, as you see, I have a lot of friends here in Hanoi. They all ride bikes. I don't know all of their names, but uh, man, there are plenty of them. And we've been just out kind of joyriding, discovering Hanoi, and it's fun. Especially in the old part of town, uh, you just kind of blend in. And I found out standing on the pegs, not that I'd need a lot of attention around me, I have it already, but standing on the pegs has been great because it's very slow. People get a little surprised when they see this big blue guy coming along. And they are just very friendly. They smile, they wave, and they all, I think, are very envious about the big bike. I have several guys that speak English come up and say, hey, how big is that bike? Mine is only 80 cc, and so on and so forth. And it's a beautiful day, this time of day. It's just going and going. I bet you there are 10, at least 10 bikes to every car in this town. It's crazy. This is Tourist Alley. Now you can see all the rickshaws and stuff like that. Definitely smell tourist here. Well, we come in here and it was funny. We came from the back road and it goes tighter and tighter. And then I start to see tourists, rickshaw kind of things, and uh, white people, uh, pink people in these rickshaws. And then all of a sudden we took a right down to underground and it's our parking garage of the hotel. I'm gonna go in and uh, have a cold one, cold shower, cold beer, and that's it. The sun is just about to go down and we are gonna go to a biker bar. It's a gorgeous day, so I'm gonna go down in the garage and see if my bike still is there. We tie on these straps so people don't sit on the bikes and it's primarily for not damaging people and bike because there's heavy big heavy bikes and they get a little excited when they see these bikes and the Vietnamese they they definitely like to touch and feel and they're very much into it I don't think <laughs> okay so my bike has been cleaned disinfected and stuff what can I say I think somebody been here taking care of it <laughs> So, uh, Helgi and me, we've been riding around uh, Hanoi here, just around the hotel, and we went down to the Ho Kim Lake, where the beautiful bridge is, and uh, whew, we're causing quite a commotion here. Everybody wants to know what we're doing, where we're going, and uh, they, they all want our bikes. They all have to come up and touch them and look at them. That's all right. I like this bike. You like this bike? Yeah. yeah. Do you have but, one? Yeah. I have, but it's very small. It's very nice. Uh, Everybody has got one. I hope yeah. in the future we have one. I think everybody has a motorbike yeah. here. 
So we are going to see if we can uh, get a little more on tape here, discovering, have a cup of coffee down the road perhaps, and get out into it again. So let's go riding a little more and hang on for your dear life. I'm going to ask some people here, stay back. Do you know Highway 4? Okay, thanks. Huh? Left here. Highway 4. Highway 4. You know a restaurant, Highway 4? Oh, there it is. Ah. Highway 4. We come to find this restaurant. We cannot drive in the door. I'm kidding you, it's a joke. <laughs> Good. No, I don't need a toothbrush today. I got the toothbrush, thank you very much. I think things are just really gonna start happening now. We ordered up some coffees here and uh, we're gonna go out and see what's going on. Oh, this looks excellent. Oh, it's so dark and thick. Oh. Uh, he's gonna give us a nice little tour of the uh, Highway 4 Cafe here and uh, let's go take a look. Okay. We have a seafood. Gecko and starfish liquor. Like a ginseng liquor, we have to use a plain rice, okay. plain rice liquor to soak the ginseng inside. Yeah. And what kind of food do you cook? Our yeah. product we have a, we have a crocodile, we have a crocodile, yeah, crocodile or cricket, cricket, low cost, you know low cost, yeah. scorpion. Do you cook them or do you put we, a peanut we, inside we, them or what do you do? Yeah, the cricket. Yeah. We put in the, the peanut. A inside. peanut, okay. And then so we stir fry. Oh, yeah. Locust we stir fry with lamb leaves. Oh, you know nice. lamb leaves. Yeah, so cricket inside. We, we we need them to go to the market to buy it. Oh they could they come to you if they deliver? Yeah. Oh those are big. cricket. Look at how big those Give guys it. are. Wow. And a lot of people from all over the world come to come here to take part in cooking classes. Oh. More bar? Oh, oh, oh. Like, you can see we have a cobra. Cobra. Cobra oh, in the in the stand here is a silk worm. Silk worm. Uh -huh. That's silk worm. Yes, yeah. And some kinds of snakes inside. Snake, snake, snake. Uh huh. And so it's good for men. Huh. Ah. To suck it. Viagra? In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go downstairs and uh, see if uh, Helge's still out the front door and uh, they will wander on. So I'll see you later. Ah, Hanoi at night. <laughs> I think I should have had two cups of coffee. Oh my god. This is definitely not for the timid, but it's exciting. Hello. Do you know what good discotheque down the road? Well, we just made our way from Highway 4 to traffic, and I'm amazed about your ability to ride, Chris. I'm alone on my 8 speed 2 It's made for backstreet Hanoi riding, but the big GS adventure with Sterling on the back with the camera, that was fantastic. You did a great job. You know, the big thing is balance. Just try to keep, keep going, keep a little momentum going, and don't stop. <laughs> and, and you can't make eye contact with anybody because you know it's like giving up your right away or something. It's just like you just you got to be assertive and just go for it. That and the shock factor of them seeing the big bike. We come up behind somebody and it's like oh, and they can just see they go to the side immediately. So I'm a little scared. When we were going through the market there, it was really tight, and there's people have you know their things for sale all along the uh, the street and everything. It's a very narrow thing, and people are bugging in there. But that, that was fun. The, the, the little market area was definitely dicey. Well, I think we are going to get a cold drink here. We come to the Vespa place and we even see a Harley here and a bigger Yamaha. And I bet they have some good stories to tell. So let's go in and uh, have a little drink to get off these warm jackets because it's definitely up in the high 80s here in Hanoi this nice evening on Saturday.
Having survived our rigorous assault on the streets of Hanoi, we decided to head to Halong Bay, a spectacular landscape of limestone pillars rising out of the Gulf of Tonkin. People visit Halong. They enjoy the uh, picturesque landscape, scenery, with uh, a lot of spectacular grottos, caves, and they can even spend a night or a few nights on a very lovely, very nice, very charming boat in the bay. Very peaceful. It's kind of misty, foggy, and you get these layer upon layer upon layer. You got tremendous depth of field when you look into the islands. But what I like most is to visit and see the fishermen that live here, because this, they use it as a shelter for their fishing boats, for their little fishing fleet. Yeah, we just arrived in this little fishing village here. Really cool place. So I thought I would go over and ask them some questions because they've been telling me that they actually live by the fish that they raise under their hoses here. So we are visiting in a local family. So let's go and have a talk to them. But they have their main job, their main business is going fishing with the boat. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is just, you know, uh, part-time job. Yeah. And how long time for small fish to three kilo? How long time? Two years. We pulled up and uh, went in and visited a, a family, and they were very friendly. Uh, wanted to talk to us. Sat down. The whole family came out: mother, father, and I think there were uh, son and daughter. People all live on boats. The, some of them never even go to the mainland. They were saying, but they have a, a school, a floating school for the children. Geez, they got little pens where they do a little fish farming. But then I'll, I think that's just kind of a secondary thing. I think mostly they go out at night and, and fish. And they were fishing squid to have these big lamps and uh, they go out way, way out. And I heard that they actually can see the squid fishing fleets from space. It's so much intense light away from land and stuff. So quite amazing. And uh, we are going to continue here tonight. We are going to be out roughing it on this air-conditioned boat and we're going to stay overnight. And then we're going to cruise around a little more, see a little more of this beautiful Hallam Bay and the characteristic mountains. It's kind of layered deep in there and uh, we're waiting for the sun going down no it's going to be just gorgeous but i'm going to have myself a beer and then perhaps go for a swim and a hike and a whole enchilada what do you think a beer i think a beer sounds very good To purchase a DVD of this program or learn more about the Indochina Expedition and other Globe Riders adventures, please visit our website.